All right, sorry to those of you who uh, already watched the part one and part two videos for the dimensional analysis playlist. Uh, I went ahead and decided I needed to make this introductory video. Um, I made the assumption that you guys knew some stuff and I realized I needed to cover these things. So if you're just now watching, uh, good for you, but I'm sorry if you've already watched the other two videos. But Okay, what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about let me just throw this out there. We live on a place that I call, that everybody calls Earth. Earth. And on this Earth, we are surrounded, sorry, Earth. On this Earth, we are surrounded by physical, physical objects. What I mean by physical objects is, if you take a look around your room or wherever you are right now, you may see You'll see your computer, you'll see a picture, a room, a light, whatever. If I were to ask you, how do you describe that object? How do you describe that laptop? How big is it? How small is it? How heavy is it? What is its specifications? How could you describe that? Well, we need, we need what are called base units to describe. We, need, we just need a system, actually. We need a system for describing these things. And that's what this video is all about. It's just I want to focus on... Uh, I want to focus, actually, there, there's different systems that people accept in the world uh, for uh, accepting different, different measures of length and time. And Let me just go ahead and write these down. Okay, there's basically... We have these things called base units. And there's three quantities that go along with these base units. And the base units vary depending on what system you're working with. They have what's called the metric system, they have the English system. Different different areas of the world use different systems. For, for the purposes of these videos, I'm gonna focus on uh, the metric system, which is also known as SI or Standard International. And they have different base units for, for these, three common, uh, these three common quantities. And this will make more sense in a second, I promise. I'm not going to make this hard. I'm not going to be boring. It's going to be fun. I'm going to try to make it fun. Okay. The three things that we use commonly in, this, in the world that we live in are length, mass, and time. And time. These are three different things that can be expressed in different units. Now we need to have a standard. Base units is kind of like a standard. You know, we may see objects in the world that look like this. You know, there may be a funky one that looks like this. And there may be something that could look like this. Maybe one that... I want to make it straighter. One that could look like this. I wanted to know, you know, maybe how long does it take for somebody to go all the way around here? You know, how much time does it take for me to travel that? Or what if I want to know how wide this, it's like a hat or something, how wide this hat is? What's the length? So this is kind of like time. How much time does it take to get, to go this whole distance? You know, how do you describe that? What about this? This is a, this is an example of length, how wide this hat is. And this, this could be an example of mass. How heavy is this? If I was standing, if this, if I was right here and somebody threw this big block on my head, how hard would it hurt? Well, that depends on its mass and how hard they threw it. Mass is kind of like how heavy it is. And we will talk more about mass. It's not the same thing as weight. Weight is when you stand on a scale. Uh, and we'll talk about more of that later. That's, that's all about gravity. Mass doesn't change. If I went to a different planet, my mass would be the same. But my weight wouldn't. Weight depends on how hard the Earth pulls me towards the surface. Mass doesn't. Mass is just how much you have. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to establish that. We have length, time, time, length, and mass. The three important parameters that describe our physical universe. And there's different, there's different base units that are, that are widely accepted. It's kind of like money. You know, in different areas of the world, like in USA, we use US dollars. Well, I give someone money, they give me back something in return. It's because they accept it. Well, it's like... You know, maybe in China or somewhere else they use, or, you know, like the British, they use pounds. Well, you know, that's a different type of money. It's the same sort of thing, but it's just for units. It's for length, mass, and time. Different things are accepted. So we're going we're gonna to focus for this video. 
we're going to focus on the metric metric system metric system and for the metric system uh, let's let's go look we had it uh, length mass time our base unit for the length base unit for length is the meter let me do that in a different color is the meter for mass the base unit is the gram and for time the base unit is the second and I'm sure most of you are familiar with these now a meter let's just start let's start with length because this is the most intuitive one I think most people already understand this thing we call length if I were to ask you to look down at your arm your left arm and look at your elbow how far does it take how long is the is your skin extended from the tip of your elbow all the way to your pinky finger you know that could be a length you know you can measure you can measure your arm that could be your pinky you know how long how long is that length you know we need to be able to have some kind of uh, worldwide accepted measure that we can base it off of that's why it's called a base unit because we're basing it off of that okay well if we said a meter is that length one meter is the length from my elbow to the tip of my pinky finger actually it'd be a little bit further it'd be like right there if a meter was about this long all the way across well that's what we could use as a base a base unit that we can use to describe other objects let me go ahead I'm gonna make this a little bit more clear sorry if that wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be let's say that okay this is kinda of ridiculous but it's gonna help you to understand this green thing okay it's kinda of looks like a cloud but it's not let's just pretend that this huge thing let's just pretend like this is huge this is the United States of America, this big green thing. This is going to be United States. If this is the United States, how, how long across from sea to shining sea? I'm just kidding. All the way from uh, this left corner all the way to this right corner, how long is that? Well, if our base unit is based off of a meter, which we're going to pretend like is the length from my elbow all the way to my pinky finger, this would be billions of... Uh, Sorry, this would be billions and billions and billions of meters because there are there's so many uh, opportunities for length to uh, be acquired all the way across the United States. You know, so what what I'm trying to get at here, I'm trying to I want to introduce what's called a prefix. There's these different prefixes that we can use whenever we're dealing with really large distances. Like, like, okay, let's go back. Remember we said a meter describes distance. And for this one, we said it's a distance from my elbow to my pinky. Well, <clears throat> if we have something that's relatively the same size or close to the same size as the distance of my arm or from my uh, elbow to my pinky, something that's close, like maybe a laptop computer, we can say, oh, that laptop is... Uh, two meters long or maybe this object is three meters long but for objects like this where it's like a the entire United States we don't want to do that in terms of the length of your from your elbow to your pinky because you'll have billions and billions of meters you know but we don't want it we, that's tedious that's kind of a pain in the butt or a pain in the neck to have to say okay how long is this in terms of that one length that we're calling meters there's what's called prefixes which is actually a really really great idea which helps us to avoid this tedious sort of thing we have what's called a prefix there's different types for different systems for the SI or the metric which is what I'm focusing on in this video I'm just gonna give you an example of a few there's a couple there's a couple of them I mean there's a there's a lot more than just the ones I'm gonna show you but for now just kind of be familiar with these we have what's called we have centa milla uh, micro Let's see, mega is one, kilo, and there's a bunch more. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and just show you what I'm talking about because the best way for me to explain it is just kind of just show you. You can have a centimeter. You can also have a millimeter. You can also have a micrometer, megameter, 
kilometer. So each one of these prefixes are fixed numbers that, remember, the, okay, the word pre, that means before. So this centa, milla, micro, mega, kilo, these are all before the word meter. So that's where the, the root of the word pre comes from. Fix means it's already a fixed value. So this centimeter is based off of this meter. It's pre, comes before the word, cent, uh, the word meter. Uh, and it has a fixed value. So remember, if I, if, if I said, okay, let, let, let's go down. Let me, let me just scroll down a little bit. Let's talk about the cons, the idea of a centimeter. A centa, centimeter. Let's just focus on what is a centimeter. You know, what is this thing? Okay, so if I said, if I was to, t if I were to tell you that this length right here, let's just forget the idea that that the uh, elbow to pinky is a as a meter. Let's pretend like this is now a meter. If I told you one meter is this long, and if I were to cut this thing up like this, if I cut this thing up into a hundred pieces obviously this isn't exactly a hundred but you get the idea if I broke this thing up into a hundred pieces the length between each individual piece would be a centimeter assuming that the whole thing was one meter so what I'm trying to say is the word centa the word centa this is this just means uh, oh, divided by a hundred one divided by one hundred so Whatever you have, the prefix centa is it's fixed as a value of one over one hundred, and you apply this one over one hundred to the base unit. So what I'm trying to say is like if this red line is one meter long, and I broke it up into a hundred pieces like this, each one of those hundred pieces would be a centimeter. So what I'm trying to say is I could say one meter, one meter is equal is equal to one centimeter. I'm sorry, that was wrong. It's equal to 100 centimeters. Sorry, I made a mistake. All right, one meter is the same thing as 100 centimeters because one meter, this red line, this this red line has a has a length of one meter. If we broke it up to 100 pieces, each one of these pieces would would be uh, a centimeter since 100 centimeters are in one meter. This is this is what we call a conversion factor. You know, this allows us to convert centimeters to meters. Like if I if I had a certain amount of centimeters, I could tell you how many meters are there. Okay, so now that you kind of understand this, this is this only applies for length. So actually, I'm sorry, no, it doesn't. But this example only pertains to length. Uh, let me show you a couple more of what I'm talking about. So centa is one of the prefixes. Milla, mega, micro. Let me just go ahead and tell you these before I run out of time. Centa means one out of a hundred. Milla is one out of one thousand. Mega is actually just a million. I'm gonna tell you what this is in a second. Micro is one one out of a million. So if you have a micrometer, a micrometer, that means if I was to take this this meter right here, this red line, and break it up into a million pieces, each one of those pieces those really, really tiny pieces, each one of them would be a micrometer. So when you think of micrometer, think of something really small. There's a bu it takes a bunch of micrometers to get up one meter, you know? If I was to tell you that I had an object that was two micrometers, you know, long, only two micrometers, that'd be two little pieces that were one, one millionth of a piece of a meter. So that's really small. So a lot of people, they get confused, which is bigger, centimeter or meter, or micrometer or meter? You can think of it like that when, if you memorize these uh, conversion factors. Okay, but mega is a little bit different. So let's go back to the example of the United States, this weird green thing. If we want to know the distance, if we know that a meter was, let's just say a meter is like this for now, instead of you know figuring out how many little meters there are all the way across the United States, we can, we can use what's called a, a megameter. Megameter. The word, the prefix mega is a million. So if there were, instead of saying, like, let's just pretend that this length, let's say that this length is 10 million, 10 million meters. Well, instead of saying 10 million meters, we can just say 10 mega meters. 
So that's a basic breakdown. Uh, this is also applicable to time and mass. I'm sure, I think I've run out of time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and see if I can continue this on the next video. So stick around. See you then.